on Earth. But instead, they've created this, it has to be mathematical. It has to work perfectly on our paper, on our human-created math sheet. The whole universe has to go by my math and nobody else's math. And uh, Einstein was a genius, and he came up with this, and we're not going to change it no matter what. It's it's. Okay, yeah. Dogmatic. Well, you're on, my, you're on my side of the fence when you say all those things. I'm not arguing about those, okay? But what I'm saying is that you're not seeing that we just have taken it a step further and said we can't just accept everything that they say. I mean, when we see, and I'm sure you're on the same page, when we see these galaxies and these nebulas and these uh, beautiful pictures of, from paint shop, that it's a complete travesty that those pictures can only come from the the telescopes of NASA. They, they, they have to go through a machine because they're not in the right wavelength that our eyes can even observe. They come out on paper. Oh, this is what is out there. You have to believe us because we're NASA. Well, if I know they're lying about that, I'm not going to accept anything they say until they start proving what they're saying, and they don't prove well, anything. I, I agree with you, Jared. I, I agree with you. Remember I started this conversation at the beginning, and I said, you asked me about NASA, and I said, yeah, you have to take everything NASA says with a grain of salt, sometimes with a whole salt cellar. So I'm on your side, okay? Right, right. And we're, not, we're not arguing about that. When they talk about dark matter and dark energy, this is just gobbledygook, okay? I mean, they, they have to have these things in order to keep the paradigm that they've established. But they also have to have the 93 million mile sun. And and, and also things like, like stellar aberration. Once again, this is a highly theoretical and mathematical only concept that cannot be proven or even observed for that matter. No, no, the difference is that we see stellar aberration. We don't see dark matter or dark energy. How, how do we see stellar aberration? Because we see every star in the sky making a circle every year without well, it changes fail. One degree, it changes one degree a day, meaning if I look up where the fourth star of the little of the little dipper is it'll be a degree different tomorrow and a degree different the next day and after a right. year it comes all the way around so what all I don't get around. is how that's even a question as to the entire mechanism makes a that's it's for t times and signs right it's for seasons it's to tell yeah, us but you but sci if you're going to be scientific about this you have to explain why that occurs you just can't say that it occurs and and you know so be it. I'm still going to believe in my flat Earth model, but I don't have any explanation for stellar aberration. Well, you can't you can't deal with it that well, way. I guess I guess Robert, you know, from what you're saying about you know your observations about uh, the stars and everything, maybe we're talking about a different definition of stellar aberration. Am I wrong in assuming that that what the definition of stellar aberration is is basically the shift of distance. Um, that would occur uh, from the time that the light is emitted from a distant star um, to the time that it arrives here in our solar system and then on our planet. Uh, no. Am I correct? No. Basically, that uh, the limited speed of light is not going to have an effect on this because the star is still going, no matter what speed the light goes, the star is still going to be making a circle in the sky because it's a matter of geometry. It's not a matter of the speed of light. Uh, yes, I, okay, and that's exactly the problem here. I mean, because everything I'm reading or I'm looking at about aberration of light or stellar aberration is telling me that there is a correction that has to be made um, for the time that, you know, the light is sent to the time it's received. That's in, in, in fact, that's what was used to discredit Aries' failure, was it not? Well, no, Harry's failure was uh, something a little different than that. Um, the water was supposed to impede the light beam coming down into the telescope, and so it would refract more. That's a, that's a different issue. Um, what you're talking well, kind of about... Proved, that proved that the Earth doesn't spin, right? It, right? Refract and also to slow it down. Well, that's what refraction is. Once it slows down, the light's going to refract. So that, that's a different issue. What, I, what I, you're talking about is relativity's attempt to explain both stellar parallax and stellar aberration, and relativity has completely failed to explain both because it's trying to base it on the speed of light. Okay. Well, and, and until that, you get anywhere else, how could you say things are relative if we can't go anywhere else? It's, it's ridiculous to say I, that it's relative. Well, you can't tell what's spinning. It could be the Earth or it could be the 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 sun. No, sorry, I live on the earth. 
So uh, there is no need for relativity in my mind because it's not needed when I live here. Now, if we were out gallivanting about the, you know, finding water on Mars and, well, then I could see what you're saying. But what I'm saying is they've kind of passed that off as a given. It's a given that we can go and land on these other places. I mean, Saturn on a telescope is a tiny little distorted blob. Now, besides that, it gets much, much better when you start looking through NASA's telescopes, but if you're even talking about the best telescope on Earth from a, an astronomer, you don't see anything that tells you, oh, I can go and, and I can go and land on Mars. I can go and land on Neptune. I can go to Pluto and see what they sent back pictures as. So what I'm saying is they're just assuming or kind of letting us assume that all that stuff is possible. And then from there, yeah, you do need relativity. You need all these different things, but I just don't think they're needed. And... That's where we're well, coming well, from. Well, hold on a second. You're mixing two things. Your first, relativity is one issue, and then the other issue is: is it possible to send up a space probe, like the Voyager uh, probe that's been out there? It's it's beyond the solar system now. Yeah, like 13 uh, billion miles. Yeah, well, it's going to happen. I mean, the inertia that was given to the Voyager space probe is going to take it millions of miles outside millions. the solar system. <laughs> I mean, if it was launched from Earth and it never returned to Earth, that means the inertia is going to make it keep on going. It's never going to stop, okay? So that that is a fact. It, 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 it is out there. Yeah, when you say fact, though, it's 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 almost as if you're, you're applying fact to the things that you accept and the things that you don't, you just don't call fact. No, I mean, because we, can, we all know that they sent the Voyager spacecraft out into space and it's never returned. You don't all know that. I don't say that. Well, I think you, you know it's I think it's one thing to disagree with NASA's whole motivation for sending out these probes, but it's quite another thing to deny that the probes are actually out there. And I think you'll do a disservice to yourself if you well, if you go in that direction because our quest is, is our quest is not to our quest is not to um to try to deny the scientific it's data. It's not trying to deny our, anything. Our quest, our quest is to try to show that they have the wrong interpretation of that data. Well, I don't think that's even possible. If they, if that spaceship is flying where they say it is, well, then everything they say about space, as far as gravity, as far as the rotations, as far as the um, the distances, that's all correct. Then they can't be interpreting that wrong. The fact is, they're making it up, and and where, well, where I say that from, and you can say I'm doing a discredit. A discredit to myself would be how I spent the first 35 years of my life, which was simply accepting things because I'm told to accept them that they're fact. They're, um, right, it's a fact I, I that we understand were, that. And did I, we and go I, to the I, moon in your mind? I, in your in your mind, did we go to the moon ever? Have we ever been there? Well, that, that's another issue, and uh, let's just deal with this the cosmological issues right here. Well, I, I, I guess to me it makes a big difference. I mean, that's how I started this whole thing. Once that came, once I did, you know, in-depth study into that and realized, no, this is a lie, well, then you start looking, well, where else have, how far have we been? And yeah, I, I know, but see, you don't know the answer to that question, okay? No, you I, can, I, I you don't. You can assign, you can, because of your experience, and this is what I was trying to say before, the temptation for someone who does investigation and sees a conspiracy behind it and verifies it, the temptation for him now is to consider everything a conspiracy. And that's just not true. Or just consider okay. everything for what it is and then address each one, kind of like that guy said at the beginning when I read, and he said it's just the way you observe the universe and the way that you evaluate evidence. And so I no right. longer will just accept evidence by saying, well, they must have sent the Voyager out because we saw it on TV. They said they did. Somebody's sitting at a computer and uh, interpreting data that's coming back from it. I mean, the fact that anybody thinks that we have the technology to communicate with a spaceship 12 billion miles from Earth is is crazy talk. Well, it's not 12 billion miles from Earth. The, 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 the most Voyager? it could be right now is 3 billion. Uh, the Voyager is... I'll look that up. I think that the Voyager 1 and 2 are both... Aren't they both past our solar system? Yeah, if they are, uh, we're not communicating with them anymore. Okay, we only communicated to it uh, with it uh, when it reached the Jupiter and Saturn, I believe, and now we're just calculating where it might be 
at, at using our Newtonian calculations. Nobody says so we're so communicating. Not even communicating with it. It's not saying where it's at. Yeah, but we are, we already got the data that Voyager was supposed to give us. You see, it doesn't matter whether we're communicating with it now. Okay, but this gets back to that same problem I'm telling you about. Okay, you you have no proof that they didn't send up Voyager, and yet your whole mentality now is to deny that Voyager sent up because you found conspiracies in all these other areas like dark matter and dark energy and well, all that. It comes That's from That's a dangerous everything. place to be. Uh, I all think they it goes a little show, beyond that. They um, just need to show one thing. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if they would if they would prove themselves one time by doing something that showed the humans on Earth that they're out there for our good by exploring uh, you know, the, the, the area around Earth, taking pictures of Earth, uh, having webcams on the moon, showing us the places they landed on the moon, showing us real footage from the ISS, um, actually showing us footage that we with our eyes can tell is real. Anybody who right, looks do you, at... Do you, do you drive a car, Jaron? I do. This is a Bill Nye line. <laughs> You, Go ahead. Do you uh, do you ever use the GPS? I absolutely do. Okay. So and GPS GPS has been studied many times, and at 300 base stations across the plane, it would be one tenth as expensive as they say the satellite system that runs GPS is. And yeah, but so I'm not talking about the expense. I'm talking about how it works. Well, what I'm saying is they. They could have easily stole 90% of the money that everybody put into it, and for 10% of the price, we have GPS within a meter of accuracy, and it's simply with base stations. There, there's no. There so, is no and GPS, GPS also is is it can very easily be just a, an advancement of a technology called Loran, um, or in these days it's called eLoran. So, I mean, most of the things are taken uh, ground-based measurements. In fact, um, it, there's, there's so much evidence to show that this is actually the navigation system that's actually in use that's being called GPS. It's almost, it's overwhelming. So, so you I don't guess, believe there's any sites up there? No, no. In fact, we, and we believe, uh, in this case, what the Bible is saying, that there is a firmament up there, and that that you know, as John three thirteen said, you know, it, no man has ever ascended into heaven. Um, right. There, okay. Let me, I I read that in um, Jaron's. Uh, not read that. I saw that in his video. Let me let me address that issue Which about part? the firmament. Oh, the firmament. I want to address that issue. Um, the firmament, according to Genesis chapter one verses six to nine, is. Um, a substance that was made. He actually took the whole second day to make the firmament, and then the firmament separated the waters from the waters, so there were waters above the firmament, waters below. And then in verses 14 to 17 in Genesis 1, it says the firmament. It's the same Hebrew word, uh, rakia. Uh, it says that the birds fly in the firmament, okay, and that the stars were placed in the firmament. So how could the firmament be some solid dome if the, if the stars are placed in the firmament and birds fly in the firmament? Because I think if you, stu if you look at other verses, um, Isaiah and, and other chapters, you will find that the description of the firmament, not only, yes, it talks about the waters above it and the waters below it, but that the sun and moon were placed within the firmament, which would kind of indicate that there is an area... Uh, in between the upper and lower layers of the firmament, uh, and and there's very there's a lot of Bible scripture that actually supports that. Um, furthermore, well, you, have, you haven't uh, pointed to a Bible scripture yet. You just said Isaiah. I don't know where in Isaiah you're talking about. Okay, well I'll I'll pull up the scriptures, but let me also say that there have been uh, several universities in. Something strange in your neighborhood. Who you gonna call? If there's something weird and it don't look good, who you gonna call? 